On this worksheet, we are going to be doing some advanced IR analysis. For each problem, we have a molecular formula and an IR spectrum, and our goal is to come up with a structure that is consistent with each spectrum. It's really difficult to come up with the exact correct structure for these types of problems. There may be more than one reasonable answer for each spectrum, and that's okay. We're just gonna come up with something that makes sense based on the formula and the spectrum that's been provided to us. So let's start with our first problem here. Our formula is C3H3Cl. We're gonna begin by drawing our lines at 1500 and at also at 3000. We want to ignore everything that is on the left or on the right side of the 1500 line. We do want to pay attention to things that are to the left of the 3000 line. That's a very sharp, spiky, strong peak, which is usually an indication of the carbon hydrogen bond that is at the end of a triple bond, carbon carbon triple bond. We don't see anything really interesting going on in this area, um, but if we do have a carbon carbon triple bond, this little peak right here could possibly be the carbon carbon triple bond peak. We're not sure. Um, in previous videos, I've talked about how if there isn't anything going on like normal in the carbon hydrogen stretching area around 3000, that would mean that there's a benzene ring present in the molecule, and that is true. However, in order to have a benzene ring, you have to have six carbon atoms in your molecule, and we only have three. So in this particular case, the absence of a peak in this part of the spectrum does not indicate benzene because we don't have enough carbons. It is indicating that we just have something kind of weird going on with the carbon hydrogen situation. So let's operate on the assumption that we have this terminal alkyne, and let's start by creating a molecule that has this terminal carbon, carbon, triple bond. Let's use our molecular formula as a way of kind of guiding us. We, we need one more carbon atom and the only place that it could go is right here. Um, we need to add two more hydrogens. We've come up with one, so we need to add two more of the three hydrogens plus the chlorine as well. So there's really only one place to put them and it looks like this is the only possible structure for this molecule. Let's move on to the next one. This molecule, our formula is C7H9N. Since I know that I have a nitrogen present, I'm gonna be looking for those NH bonds to the left of the 3000 line in this special hydrogen area. So I'm beginning by ignoring everything that's on the right-hand side of the 1500 line. Here is my 3000 line. Um, like I said, this we're looking for the NH peaks because the formula indicated to me that I have nitrogen present. Since there's two NH peaks, that means that I have two NH bonds. So that's something that I notice. Also notice here, because the carbon hydrogen peaks are really stubby, this tells me that I probably have a benzene ring. And then I notice this peak as well. Um, this is a carbon-carbon double bond peak. It is pretty strong for a carbon-carbon double bond peak and it's also pretty broad. It might trick you into thinking maybe it's a carbon-oxygen double bond, but if you look at the formula, there isn't any oxygen present, so I know for sure that it's not a carbon-oxygen double bond. Also, because there's a benzene ring, I have to have a carbon-carbon double bond peak, so it has to be this guy right here. So with this information, let's see what we can come up with. We've got a benzene ring. We know that we need to have at least that. That's six of our seven carbons, and we need to add a seventh carbon. I'm just gonna put it right here. Uh, in terms of hydrogen, we have nine hydrogen to account for. I'm gonna fill in the ones that we know we've already got. We'll put those right there. I need a nitrogen that's gonna have two hydrogens on it. I'm gonna put my nitrogen right here. I need my nitrogen to have two hydrogens. Let's see how we're doing on carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine, there we go. So this is one possible structure for this molecule. It's not the only possibility though. There are other options out there. Like another option that we could come up with was if we had the carbon and the nitrogen um, not bonded directly to each other. So something like this. There, like I said, there's gonna be more than one possible structure that is consistent with this IR. 
if we wanted to determine exactly what this molecule was, we would need to consult some sort of reference, some kind of database that would help us identify the actual structure. Let's take a look at our next example. So this one, looking at the formula, I see that I have oxygen in the formula. And as I'm looking at the IR, I can, I can see that I've got that big, huge, broad peak. So that's telling me that I probably have an OH. Um, this big, broad peak right here to the left of the 3000, that is almost certainly my OH peak right there. Also see this just um, kind of weird, funky looking carbon hydrogen peaks. I'm feeling like that's probably a benzene ring. It's stronger than normal, but just because of how jagged and just kind of gross looking it is, that's probably benzene. And then if I have benzene, this right here is gonna be my carbon-carbon double bond for the benzene ring. And that's really all that I can see out of this spectrum. So I'm gonna start by drawing what I've got. I've got a benzene ring that's six carbons. I've got one more carbon to account for. So there's that guy right there. And I know I need to do something with my oxygen in the form of an OH. So maybe I'll put it, put the OH on this carbon right here. How am I doing for hydrogen atoms? I need eight. And right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And just like the previous example, there is definitely going to be more than one possible answer to this question, uh, more than one reasonable structure that we could propose that we really can't distinguish just simply by looking at this spectrum. Here's our next example, C8, H11. And since I know that I have a nitrogen in the molecule, I know that I need to be looking for the NH peaks. Um, and it looks like I have one NH peak, which means that my molecule just has an one NH bond. This funny looking carbon hydrogen area tells me that I have a benzene ring and the benzene ring has carbon-carbon double bonds in it, so there's those two peaks right there. That's all that I'm seeing in terms of functional groups, so let's go ahead and try to piece something together here. There is the benzene ring. Um, we need to have two more carbon atoms, so I'm just gonna put them like that, and we need to have a nitrogen. Let's just throw it out here, and then let's see how we're doing for hydrogens. We need 11 hydrogens, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. All oh, this structure is not gonna work because this structure that I proposed has an NH2. I need it to be just an NH, not an NH2. So the way that I'm gonna fix that is by taking one of those hydrogens away and the nitrogen needs to be bonded to something. So what I'm gonna do is just take one of these carbons off the ring and stick it out there like that. Now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Looks good. And again, this is just one possible structure. We could draw other um, constitutional isomers as well. Here's our next example, C7H7Cl. Let's draw our lines here. 1500, we're going to ignore all of this stuff. 3000, we have no special hydrogens in this molecule. We have a very stunted carbon hydrogen peak. So it's definitely got a benzene ring and there's our carbon carbon double bond for the benzene ring. And that's all that this um, structure, that this IR is telling us. So we'll go ahead and start with proposing something. We need a benzene ring. We need um, a total of seven carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Carbon number seven. We need a chlorine somewhere. And we need a total of seven hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, you could draw any other constitutional isomer for this molecule that you wanted. There isn't any way for us to distinguish easily um, the constitutional isomers from each other by looking at the IR spectrum. We got one more example, C5H10O2. So we've got some oxygens present. We're going to, we've got two oxygens. So we're going to look at all of the different possibilities for those oxygen. We clearly have an OH group. Those are impossible to miss, nice and big. We also have, look at that, that's a carbon-oxygen double bond. Um, it's broad, it's uh, around 1700, so it's shifted a little bit further away than where we see our carbon-carbon peaks. 
This looks like a really normal carbon hydrogen stretch. Also, we only have five carbon atoms in the molecule. So there's no benzene ring for this one. There's not any of this guy right here. Um, partly because this is pretty normal looking and then also because we don't have a carbon-carbon double bond and also because we don't have enough carbon atoms in general. So I'm just going to make a five carbon chain, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to put a carbon oxygen double bond and an OH group. I'm making this a carboxylic acid. This has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 hydrogens, looks perfect. There's a lot of constitutional isomers that you could draw um, that would have these functional groups in them. You could, if you wanted, you could separate the carbon oxygen double bond with the OH group. That's pretty unlikely though. If you have an OH group with a carbon oxygen double bond, it's almost certainly going to be a carboxylic acid.